Hi, I'm Barbara Rimkunis, and this is your Exeter History Minute. In 1885, George Cross, the principal of Exeter's Robinson Female Seminary, worried that the 20-year-old school had become too academic. The school's benefactor, William Robinson, wanted a girls' school that would make female scholars equal to all the practical duties of life so that they could, in his words, compete successfully with their brothers throughout the world. This was all well and good, but there was a concern that book learning wouldn't feed families. The directors of the school had always been careful to avoid the school turning into a finishing school, where needlework and homemaking were the focus. Girls were taught academic subjects only, including mathematics, history, English grammar and rhetoric, the sciences of botany, physiology, chemistry, and astronomy. Those preparing for college added Greek and Latin to their studies. But by the late 1880s, it had become evident that the majority of the girls didn't go on to college, and perhaps the school should offer some more practical studies. A domestic science department was created. Teachers were hired from the prestigious Boston Cooking School, including the esteemed Anna Barrows, who would go on to co-author the popular home science cookbook and edit the American Kitchen magazine. To give the girls some incentive, Exeter businessman William Burlingame, who's also secretary of the Board of Trustees, offered monetary prizes for the best loaf of bread baked each year. And because teenagers, then as now, appreciate both competition and cash, the contest was quite popular. The annual Bread Day was celebrated each year with a ceremony that would feature a guest speaker, usually a local person, maybe the head of the women's club or a pastor's wife. In 1899, however, they invited Julia Ward Howe, then the most famous woman in America because she'd written the words to the Battle Hymn of the Republic. Surprisingly, even though she'd probably never baked her own bread in her life, she agreed to speak. As she entered the building, the entire student body rose and sang the Battle Hymn of the Republic, and she responded with surprise and pleasure, according to reporters, as if she didn't hear that literally every time she made a public appearance. Still, it seemed to be, she seemed to be a good sport about it. She could at this point have let forth with an unbridled feminist manifesto on the rights of women. Her husband had squandered her money before his death. She was still without the political power of the vote. But instead, she looked at the faces of the eager students, so proud of their bread baking skills, and she talked to them about literature. She discussed Whittier, Lowell, Longfellow, and Holmes, all of whom she'd been lucky enough to meet. She talked about the work of Margaret Fuller, an early feminist. The Burlingame Bread Prize continued at the seminary long enough for a young Marion Tyler to write in her diary in 1909, May 18th, as it was bread day, we didn't have any school in the morning. Ruth got third prize, and I got first honorable mention. In a side note to her sister, she later added, didn't I take a loaf of your bread? I'm sure I did. The athletic Marion would go on to marry happily, travel the world with her husband, legally vote, and live her life the way she wanted. Julia Ward Howe would have been pleased. For more information on Exeter's Robinson Female Seminary, visit our website at www.exeterhistory.org. Laura, do we have some jam? We have a lot of bread to get through.